Hello, my friends. Uh, my name is Sean Sagard. I'm the Director of Pastoral Care here at Grant Memorial Church. And just like to, to welcome you to another edition of Psalms uh, with Sean. And uh, just so glad that you're able to, to join in with us uh, today. A special uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us uh, from the Waverly, uh, from Linden Home Place and Linden Lake Terrace, uh, from Brightwater, and also from Sterling House. Uh, so glad to have you folks uh, with us today, as well as uh, our regular uh, church family uh, from Grant Memorial Church. If you are tuning in uh, today, uh, so glad to have you uh, with us as well. Uh, so today we are continuing our series on Psalm chapter 9. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, last week uh, we had started started uh, Psalm chapter 9 off, which is looking at the first two verses. And so we'll continue to, to jump uh, deeper into this uh, into this psalm. But before before I do that, uh, let's let's spend some time uh, praying together. And I think it's important any time that we approach the, the Word of God, uh, we need God's help to, to unpack what He has for us. And so I encourage you that as I'm praying in a few seconds here, I just encourage you to, to pray along uh, with me as well, uh, whether you do that uh, out loud or, or just in your heart, uh, that, is, that is fine. So let's, uh, let's pray together. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. We're so grateful. Uh, for the ways in which you lead us, the ways in which you guide us. And we're just so grateful for your word, Heavenly Father, that we can go to your word, that we can learn more about who you are, the things that you have for us, uh, the ways in which you have used different people in, in the Bible uh, to, to encourage our hearts, the, the words that you have given them uh, to, to speak truth and life uh, into, into us, into our situations, into our, our lives as individuals, as families, as a church community. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would prepare us, that you'd prepare myself uh, as well, that you would prepare our hearts, uh, that you would open our ears, uh, that you would help us not to miss what you have for us today. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so last week, like I was saying, we focused our attention on the first two verses of, of Psalm chapter 9. So I just want to reread those. Um, it says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. So last week we were talking about how uh, this is a, a psalm that is, that is focused on, on God's judgment, on his justice. Uh, and yet in the first two verses we see uh, David uh, starting off with praising God. Um, and so last week we unpacked each verse by verse. Um, and one of the things that, that stood out to me uh, last week, but even in, in, the, in the days that followed that, uh, was verse 2. I will be glad and rejoice in you, or like we talked about last week in the New Living Translation, it says, I will be filled with joy because of you. So <clears throat> this sometimes uh, when, uh, when I'm reading through the Psalms or I'm preparing for, for, for a Bible study, oftentimes uh, God is using those uh, words to speak directly to me. Uh, and this last week was, it was a good example of that. Um, after I had the opportunity to talk to you folks about about this psalm, uh, my week just my week went downhill uh, from from there. It was a very it was a very hard week, um, and one that I was not expecting to be difficult. Uh, had some some news that was was very hard to hear, uh, and so it was. I, I I'm just gonna be honest. I really struggled uh, last week, and these words in this psalm uh, came came back to me. I will be filled with joy because of you. You know, last week I said that when I think about joy, I think about some of the things that get in the way of, being, of us being filled with joy. And they pretty much are all examples from, from the things that I am not in control of. Things that I cannot control that get in the way of me being filled with joy. And that sure was the case for me uh, last week. Um, there were things that were coming up. It was such a hard week. Those things were getting in the way of me experiencing joy. 
uh, with with God, experiencing joy in my, in my life, uh, and so I was I was struggling uh, with that. But I was reminded about what we what we talked about, uh, and remember I talked about how how, how when we talk about love, like love is something that is defined by choice. It cannot be forced on on someone else. We can't we can't say to someone you love me. Uh, choice is a very important part of love. And on last week I talked about how joy, how choice is also an important part of joy. And you know, those words that we talked about last week were actually a help uh, and comfort. Because, you know, it's, it was such a powerful reminder last week of the th- ways in which I'm not con- in control of the things that are going on around me, but I am so grateful. I am so grateful that we serve an amazing God who is in control of all of those things. And even the things that I'm scared about or afraid about, the outcomes that, that I, I don't know what, what's going to be taking place. And it's, I'm just so grateful that I can put my trust in God. And then that's where the joy comes in. So even in the most difficult moments, even in the most difficult moments of a difficult week, um, it's so important and so inspiring for me to just to take a step back and just say, Heavenly Father, in this moment, I'm ex- you know exactly what I'm experiencing, and I, I need your help. I need you to take these things uh, from me. I need you to, uh, to help me uh, see these things through uh, so that I can experience the fullness of your love, of your joy, of your peace, and of your hope. And, and really, it's, it's about perspective. Right? And we've talked about this before in the book of Psalms, that the Psalms is so helpful for, for each of us uh, in our understanding of who God is, of his character, uh, but also it gives us perspective. It gives perspective about who we are. It gives perspective about, about who, uh, who God is. Uh, so that's, that is a quick uh, recap, uh, not only of what we talked about last week, but also how I was able to put to put these words into, into practice myself. So, uh, so this week, we're going to focus our attention on verses um, uh, 7 through 9. And uh, so let, let's jump in again and let's read, uh, let's read Psalm chapter 9 in its full context. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Your endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations that what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead. All the nations that forget God. But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord. Do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. 
So uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to focus our attention on uh, this week as we look at Psalm chapter 9 is specifically verses 7 through 10. Um, so those, those four verses, the Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of troubles. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. What's so interesting, uh, once again, about this psalm, but specifically those four verses, uh, James Johnson, uh, in the commentary that I was reading uh, the, the, over this whole series, he talks about uh, how this psalm, how it revolves around God's judgment, his justice. And what James Johnson does here in Psalm chapter 9 is, is that he makes this very interesting uh, comparison uh, between not only what is happening here in Psalm chapter 9, but also what is happening in 1 Kings chapter 3. And what's so interesting about 1 Kings chapter 3 is, is that you have uh, the story of King Solomon. And I would just encourage you, because we're not going to have a, have a chance to, to read through all of 1 Kings uh, chapter 3. I'm going to read a little bit of it. But I just encourage you to, this week, go and read in 1 Kings uh, the first few chapters um, it's such a, a f interesting story, especially as you get into um, a chapter three, as King Solomon uh, is, he, as he's talking with God and he's praying to God, uh, God, uh, he, he asks God for wisdom. Um, and God answers that prayer in some, some amazingly significant ways. Um, and so James Johnson points us in the direction of the story well, just after uh, King Solomon has received the wisdom from God. And so that starts in verse 16. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to read from verses 16 to 28 just to kind of give us some more context here. So, um, so King Solomon is, uh, is, is holding court and it starts, it picks up in verse 16. It says, now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, pardon me, my Lord. This woman and I live in the same house. I had a baby while she was, was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night, this woman's son died because she laid on top of him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I, your servant, was asleep. She put him next by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked closely at him in the morning light, I saw that he wasn't my son that I had born. The other woman said, No, the living one is my son, the dead one is yours. But the first one insisted, No, the dead one is yours, the living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. The king said, This one says, My son is alive and your son is dead. While that one says, No, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, Cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to another. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved. Out of love for her son, she said to the king, Please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, Neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Then the king gave his ruling, Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him, for she is his mother. When all Israel heard the verdict, the king had given, they held the king in awe because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. I think one of the reasons why 
James Johnson points out this story as we're looking at Psalm chapter 9 is because it's such a great and powerful example of how important justice is. Um, and we, we know that firsthand in, in our own lives, in the world in which we live, don't we? Um, we all value justice, but we don't all see justice taking place uh, around us. And that is a real struggle for, for us. Uh, whether that's something that's personally going on in our lives or we see some of the things that are happening in our city or in our world. And, and really, there are too many examples, too many stories to, to mention of, of times or situations where we see injustice happening. And, and what, are we, what are we to do about that? Like, what do, where, where, does our, where does our hope come from? And I think that this is what, uh, what is so important about Psalm chapter 9 and even in this story in, in 1 Kings 3 that point us toward not only our, our need, our need for justice, our desire for justice, but also that, yes, there is someone who is the, the almighty judge, the most righteous uh, judge, uh, and that is that is God, um, and I think oftentimes we we get so disillusioned uh, by our world um, that we we sometimes we 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 almost we almost give up. Um, but this is exactly what Psalm nine is pointing us towards: is is that yes, there is a true judge, there is a righteous judge, and this is what James Johnson says in his commentary a little later on. He says. Why does this story, so the story about King Solomon and the two women and the, and the one living baby, why does this story capture our imaginations? We long for justice. We long for a judge who will be fair and honest, a judge who will see through lies and deceit to make things right. This longing is buried deep in every human heart. Ultimately, this longing leads us to God because he is the just ruler and the judge of the universe. This reality is at the heart of Psalm 9. I know I've shared this before about one of the times that, that I had the opportunity to, to go and be a help and support to, to somebody uh, who was before the, before the criminal justice system uh, here in Winnipeg and went to, uh, to go see the proceedings in, in the court of law. And I was just, I was struck uh, so much by the, by the judge who, who, despite the situation and what was, what was happening, uh, the judge did her absolute very best to administer justice and did so in a way that, that I felt uh, was, was very merciful and gracious. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare her to, to God, and God in, in, in any sense, but it was just a, a powerful reminder for, for me in that moment uh, how much I value uh, justice. But justice that's done in, in grace and justice that is done in mercy. And I know that we can count on God to be that judge for us. Want, exactly what, um, what James Johnson is saying, right? We long for a judge who will be fair and honest, right? And those two things are very, uh, sometimes uh, work, work against each other, it seems. But, but not for God. Like God sees it all. He knows what is fair and what is honest, and we can count on him uh, to to bring to bring justice. So let's let's just dive a little deeper into these four verses here. So uh, starting at verse seven, the Lord reigns forever; He has established His throne for judgment. Well, that's an that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting verse, isn't it? Um, like God is is so much um, more than than just justice, right? Like he is he is loving, um, and he is kind, and he is merciful. Uh, but what's interesting here is is that it says he has established his throne for judgment. And so what is what does that mean? What is that about? What that means is is that that. God is in it for the long haul. This is, this is a forever thing for God. This is not one moment he's, he's deciding, well, this year I'm going to be you know, the righteous, righteous judge. No, he has established his throne. It's part of who he is. It's part of his identity. Um, 
that, that he has established his throne. He's established himself for judgment, for justice, for righteous justice. Verse 8, he rules the world, world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. Wow, that, you know, I, I think that we can't under, or we cannot um, underemphasize that en enough, right? Um, because when we talk about this, the judges, the people with equity, like that's one of the things that's happening in our world today as we're struggling with how do we treat each other equally? How do we treat each other well? How do we love and care for each other in the diversity that makes up our, makes up our world? And, and you know what? Uh, we don't have to look very far to see that we're not doing very well uh, on, that, on that front, whether that's in the United States uh, or whether that's here in Canada, whether that's across uh, cultural lines, uh, sexuality, uh, all all of these different different things in which how do we how do we treat each other? How do we treat each other with love and care and with grace? And it's something that we struggle with, and yet we have this all 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 we have this understanding that that God is the one who is righteous, and that He judges all people with equity, and so that's important for us to note. And the next two verses, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. You know, it's it's how I felt this this week. Uh, we're just just one thing after this past week, one thing after another, after another, uh, and it was just a rough week uh, all all around. And I'm so grateful that in those moments that that I knew that I wasn't alone. Um, God sent me uh, encouragement when I needed it the most. Uh, and whereas I could have some of the things that happened this week, I could have just chosen to dwell on those things. Or sometimes you feel like you're not even choosing it. You're just so caught up in it. You're just, you're just dwelling on those things and you're trying to, trying to process them. And they just, they just tear it, tear at your heartstrings. Um, but I just really felt that, that God was, was being gracious and merciful to me that this past week and allowing me not to, be, not to be so focused and wrapped up on those things, but also helping to, to focus my attention on who he is and what he is up to in, in, in these situations that I was encountering this week and releasing those things to, to him. And so I was so grateful. I'm so grateful that, that God is a refuge for the oppressed a stronghold in times of trouble. It says, those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have, fors for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name. What does it mean? What does it mean to know God's name? Well, isn't it interesting that we talked about that a, a number of uh, a number of sessions ago when we talked about um, that the 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 that God has given in Psalm chapter eight, right? Remember uh, that that as David is talking, Lord, our Lord, Yahweh, right back in Exodus chapter chapter three, when God gives His people gives Moses His very name, Yahweh. So God has given us his name. We know his name. Um, and, and not only in the, in the context of just knowing his name, but that we know that he is with us, that he is walking alongside of it. That's, that's what it, it means to know God's name. It's not just in knowing the name itself, but knowing from our experience with God that he is a shepherd that walks alongside of walks alongside of us in a very real and powerful way. That's been my experience, and I hope that that has been uh, your experience as well, that as you know God's name, that you are able to trust in him, and that your experience has been that God will never forsake you as long as you are seeking him him. Um, and I think that that's, that's such an amazing thing about this psalm, pointing us back to, to who God is, uh, not only helping us to understand his character, and that for him it's about um, righteous judgment, uh, righteous justice, 
uh, but also how that transcends into us being able to, to experience him by knowing his name, being able to point back and see the ways that he is walking alongside of us so faithfully. So I hope that that this has been a a help and encouragement uh, to you today. Encourage you just to continue to be reading in the Psalms, especially uh, the rest of Psalm chapter 9. And we'll we'll pick up the rest of the Psalm uh, next week. And we'd just like to uh, encourage you once again. If there's a way that I can be a help and support, maybe you're going through a difficult time. Maybe you've had a very difficult week. Um, and as you've been thinking about uh, what it means to, to, uh, to choose joy, uh, to see the ways in which God has been working in your life, if that's been a struggle for you, uh, reach out to me. Uh, I'd be more than happy to talk with you, to pray together with you. Um, just want to be able to be a help and support uh, any way that, that I can. Uh, so please uh, call me or send me an email um, and just look forward to our time again next week. But before I, I let you go, uh, let's, uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, just so grateful uh, once again for uh, the book of Psalms uh, and for King David and how he unwraps these things for us, how he helps us to understand who you are, your character. Uh, Heavenly Father, the ways in which you are the righteous judge, your desire is for justice, uh, that you are, are fair and honest, as it says in these verses, Heavenly Father. And we are so grateful because we look around our world and we see example after example of people who are not fair and people who are not honest. Uh, and it's our it's built within us, as it says uh, in uh, as as James Johnson has said in his words, Heavenly Father, that that it's part of who we are that we long for justice, uh, we long for fairness, we long for honesty. And I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to know in very real ways that we find those very things uh, in perfection in you. So I pray, Heavenly Father, I pray for the people who are watching. Uh, those people who've had difficult weeks, I just pray, Heavenly Father, that, uh, that they would feel your love and your peace and your grace, that they would uh, experience those things in very powerful ways, that they would know that you are walking alongside of them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for taking time to be with me today, and we'll see you next week. Amen.